Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams and we're going to run a one sample t-test and we're going to use the critical value approach. The manufacturer of a plug-in air freshener claims that it will continue to be effective on average for 60 days. Based on consumer feedback, Consumer Reports believes that the air freshener actually lasts less than 60 days. In order to test their hypothesis, they select 30 air fresheners at random and the average lifetime is found to be 59 days with a standard deviation of 7 days. At alpha equal to 0.05 is the manufacturer's claim of 60 day life supported. So let's go ahead and gather up the information that we need out of the question. So um, they claim that it would be effective on average for 60 days. And so to test their hypothesis, um, Consumer Reports selected 30 air fresheners. That's our N of 30. Um, and the average lifetime was found to be 59 days. That's X bar or our sample mean. And it had a standard deviation of 7 days. You will note that this standard deviation refers to the sample. Therefore, it is S. And whenever we have S, that triggers a t-test. We're going to run a t-test. And we also know at that point, too, when we run our t-test, that we're going to need degrees of freedom. And our degrees of freedom here is going to be 29. Because remember, degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So now we know we're going to run a um, t-test for the mean. So let's take a look at our null and alternative hypothesis statements. So the established or believed life of these air fresheners is 60 days. Now we're going to look in the problem to see and there's an indicator of which way we're going to test. So Consumer Reports believes that they last less than 60 days. So that becomes less than here. HO and HA are mathematical opposites. If less than is here, then greater than or equal to is here. I knew to put that less than in my alternative hypothesis because we never have any version of equal to in the null. The other thing that HA is going to tell me is because I have this sign of negative of less than think of this as your arrow telling you that you're going to run a one tailed left test in other words under the critical value approach our rejection region is going to be on the left hand side of the curve under a critical value approach we're going to do two things we're going to calculate a test statistic and find a critical value and then we're going to compare those to make the decision about our hypothesis so because we are running a t-test we're going to calculate a t as our test statistic so we're simply going to take our sample mean of 59 divided by the presumed value of the population mean going to divide it by the standard error of the mean which is simply going to be our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size and so when we do that bit of math we know our test statistic our calculated t is going to be a negative 0 0.78 so now I need a critical value and remember I was testing at an alpha of 0.05 and I had a sample size of 30 which gave me degrees of freedom equal to 29 and because I was running a one tail test all of that alpha is in one tail so now I'm going to look up in my normal distribution chart T at 0.05 with 29 degrees of freedom <clears throat> so I'm going to come down and I want to find my 29 degrees of freedom is going to be right here and remember we said we had a one tail alpha 0.05 which is going to be here so what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to find the intersection of that row and that column and I'm going to be at 1.699 negative as my critical value so here's my curve in my one in my left tail test and what you'll recall is that getting a test statistic more extreme than the critical value 
down here in this lower tail of the curve gives me a reject decision. Um, any test statistic located in this area of the curve will be a do not reject. Always think of crossing the lines as being out of bounds. And we calculated our test statistic to be a negative 0.78, which falls into the do not reject region of the curve. So now we can make our decision. Remember, Consumer Reports was claiming that the actual life expectancy of these air fresheners was less than 60 days. But in this case, our decision is do not reject HO. There's now insufficient evidence to support Consumer Reports' claim that the air fresheners actually last less than 60 days. As always, I hope that you found this useful, and thanks for watching.